I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another review? Now is another review for Brian Stipe, who wanted my thoughts on some of the Tip Botcher sequels. And if you're interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, you could either send a request directly to my PayPal or join me on my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. If not, no worries, but if so, thank you so much. Now, Tip Botcher 2, I talked about how much I didn't like that because like killing off Van Damme's character, killing off the brother character that was in the wheelchair, making it completely pointless. Tip Botcher 3, The Art of War, at least you can be able to watch this as a standalone because there is no Tom Poe, because there is no... They don't talk about that stuff in the first movie or technically the second movie. So you can look at it as just what it is. David Sloan, Sasha Mitchell's character. This other guy, Dennis Chan. They go off to Brazil for this exhibition bout. And then they get in the midst of this trouble with bad guys who have a prostitution ring. And then you get some gunplay because for some reason they know how to use guns. I didn't know Sasha Mitchell and Dennis Chan knew how to use fucking guns, but apparently they can, and they're fine with killing people. Okay, it's a 90s action movie. Okay. And then... But then the bad guy also wants Sasha to fight in the turn... The, it's not really a tournament, but fight the bout. So has them um, train, but train to get tired, carrying rocks in the backpacks. But that did his chance like screw that. I'm gonna get some fucking snake venom and you're gonna drink it and then put some mud over your face. And apparently that takes away the soreness. But there's quite a bit of action in the film. Sasha Mitchell is that valley valley dude, meathead, Cody from step by step with but not as dumb as that character okay in martial arts not the best but not the worst I did he did some gun play he did a decent fight at the end what's funny about it is the director Rick Keen apparently hated Sasha Mitchell because there's an interview where he says that Sasha Mitchell was a nut job the crew hated him and liked me one of the grips was a cop and he said if the guy ever touches you I'm gonna arrest his ass and throw him in the nastiest Brazilian jail you've ever seen Sasha would just lose it he told me his father would be sitting at the table one minute the next he say I don't like this and throw his plate against the wall one day he was so mad at me he's a pretty big guy and I'm small I'm under five foot seven And he would tell me, I just feel like punch you the fuck in the face with his fist right next to me. And I would say, do it right here in the cheat. That'll be a million dollars. Hit me twice. That's two million. 
Another time, I just had it with him. He said, this is a stupid line. And I said, Sasha, you wouldn't know a good line if it was right in front of you. He said, how do you say that in front of the crew? I was like, wasn't it a couple of days ago you were threatening to knock my head off? We also had some sequences where you don't have to really kick the guy. And he kicked the crap out of this guy. I said, what are you doing? It's not going to be any more real. Because we're shooting from behind. We're not seeing where the kick hits. I think he thought people thought he was stupid, which was true. <laughs> and he was also violent. And so he used his position of privilege as the star in a very negative way. And yeah, I've heard other stories that Sasha Mitchell is not the best guy. And if you look at Sasha Mitchell nowadays, steroids anyone? People can't explain it any other way, but the way his fucking voices and he's unrecognizable. I looked up interviews, I'm like, who the hell is that? That's Sasha Mitchell? I can barely recognize his face, his body is very different, and I'm going... Is it, do I really buy this all natural and not enhanced? It just, he's a guy I would never want to meet. He's okay in front of the camera, but it's not like he got a lot of starring roles, so I don't even know why the fuck he would act that way. Great, just because you did get a lot of Star Wars roles, you shouldn't act that way either. But I'm just saying, for a guy that, what, at this point had, what, Tip Boxer 2, and that's it? And then Tip Boxer 3, which, a year later, because this was 1992. Tip Boxer 2 was 1991. And this went, I think, mostly straight to video. The plot, like I said, they go to Brazil, this kid steals their camera, they get it back, the kid has a sister, our two leads bond with these two, the sister gets taken, they find out it's a prostitution ring, you get a couple of fights sprinkled in there. At one point they get arrested, then they get let go. They go to this mansion, the two leads, and shoot guns and machine guns, and even this Dennis Chan is shooting. And I'm thinking, well, Dennis Chan, if you're able to shoot, why the fuck didn't you try to do that when you rescued Van Damme's brother in the first film? Like in the first movie, all the guns are pointed at you, and you just had a hope that the other guy came in with a gun. And I thought, oh, it's because he doesn't know how to shoot a gun, because he doesn't believe in guns. No, apparently that's not the case. So when he was rescuing the brother in the wheelchair in the first movie, he could have used a fucking gun. So he just did because he's a dumbass in the first one, apparently. Or he's an asshole. And... <laughs> I mean, the bad guy... On one hand, I'm glad it wasn't Tom Poe again. On the other, I can't remember fucking thing about the bad guy. Except I thought he kind of looked like Brian Pillman, the wrestler. He kind of looked like him with the hair. As a, but even the other bad guy, I can't even remember much about him. So I do think the villains were forgettable. There's some decent points of the Brazil location they use. The movie goes at a decent enough pace that it was never that boring. I think this was on 2B TV for free. Which most of those Tip Boxer sequels are on 2B TV. I say I think because I don't know if it's on there now because it seems like they differentiate. Maybe they can only have so many movies at a certain time on there for free. I don't know. I know I'm not talking about much because there's really not much to get into with the picture. I mean, did I care about the kids? Not really. I think their acting was subpar. Both the little kid and the older, the older sister barely had any lines. The fighter who exhibition by fight he's going too far and this younger guy and then Sasha Mitchell's like what are you doing man you ever heard of exhib exhibition and then that'll lead to the fight at the end 
it's still weird how it's going from a prostitution ring, but then the guy is really done ho about this fucking exhibition as well because of reasons, and they explain the reasons, but I don't give a fuck. And I didn't even hate the film. I, it was average. Like I had an average, okay, fun time with it. Because it didn't piss me off by, oh, it made the first tip boxer useless. Fuck you, tip boxer too. It didn't. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It didn't do this to me like Kid Boxer Four, where I'm going, what the fuck is this? Like, at least Sasha and Dennis Chan, I would rather watch than Sasha and whoever the fuck the guy was who was his buddy in Kid Boxer Four. And then there's Tom Pole, but he's a chatterbox, and it's not even the same actor. And then Tom Pole gets away. It's just, at least here the bad guys don't get away. And the fight was better than Kid Boxer 4. Like the fight he has with the guy in the tournament. Pretty good because it's in the ring. And they go out of the ring. And then even Cody. I mean, Sasha puts the pill of water. And splashes on the guy. And beats the fuck out of him. Not a bad fight. And then the other bad guy disses just desserts. Which was nice. He disses just desserts. Because the kid stabs him. He's like oh I got stabbed. So that was nice. So you know, it's not like Tom Poe did in Wayne Kid Boxer 4. So of Kid Boxer 2, 3, and 4, I would say this may be the least mad. As, I mean, you do get some gunplay, you get some fights. If you could deal with Sasha Mitchell, and it's an average storyline, not the highest production values. Is that a film that went to theaters? It, it is what it is, Kip Archer 3, The Art of War. I don't even know why The Art of War is on that title, just because. Kip Archer 3, not the worst. The music, I can't remember any of the music. Storyline, I mean, again, average, alright. They made me that mad, so I guess that's a step up. Nowhere near the level of Kid Boxer 1, but eh, you'll seem worse. I don't know how snake venom drinking that and mud on you makes you better, but hey, okay, sure. And it, I guess it depends how you feel about Sasha Mitchell. To me, How do you feel about Sasha Mitchell? He's definitely not one of the big, great action stars of the 90s. I mean, when you had early Steven Seagal, prime Steven Seagal, you had Van Damme. I mean, 1992, the same year, was Universal Soldier for Van Damme. When you had Dolph Lundgren doing films like Showdown Low Tokyo and I Come in Peace and Men of War. When you have Jeff Speakman doing The Perfect Weapon and Daily Outbreak and Street Night. You have Jeff Wincott doing films like Last Man Standing. You have Derry Daniels doing films like Riot and Rage and Recoil. So there was a lot of better action stars out there. Marta Costco's were gone. Funny enough to do Kip Archer 5, which I would put above this. Or let alone Drive, which is to me a classic from 1997. With Martha Costco's. A lot better action stars of this time period. But with that said. Time waster. Sure. Not too bad fights. Decent pacing. Dennis Chan. Nice to see him again. He was good in Kid Boxer 1 and 2. As the trainer. Not a bad actor. Again, nice to see him there. The villains step down fairly forgettable the plot okay, is wrestling a prostitution ring gunfighting mixed in with still fighting his exposition conglomeration made it I guess a bit different not the same old wasn't a repeat give credit to that music I can't remember a damn note <laughs> so, and Routine, average direction. I think routine was part of the production of Point Break, I believe. 
and I think it's the same director that did Prayer of the Roller Boys with Corey Haim. So I've seen better and I've seen worse direction. So this one is to me an average film. And it didn't make me mad, which again was a step up from Tip Potter 2 and 4. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.